this video, we're going to look at how we can conduct a hypothesis test for the mean. We've already looked at how hypothesis tests are set up. We're going to specifically drill down into how to test the mean mu. And with that test of the mean, the big question is, do we use the normal distribution or the student's t's distribution? The way we decide which distribution to use is whether or not we know sigma, this population standard deviation. If we know the population standard deviation, we can use the normal distribution. If we don't know the population standard deviation, we have to use the student's t distribution with n minus 1, or 1 less than the sample size, for your degrees of freedom. We're going to use Excel to find the p-values off the t distribution in this video. The book talks about how you can use a table to kind of estimate this value, but I find using Excel is a lot more direct because it gives you the exact value for the p-value. Depending on if we're doing a left tail, right tail, or two tail test, there's a different command in Excel. If you do equals t.dist, that's going to be a left tail test. We'll put x, the degrees of freedom, and then we always have to type in true after the second argument. For the right tail and two tail tests, we only need two arguments. We'll say equals t.dist.rt for right tail, and we just have to type in the x value and the degrees of freedom. For two tail tests, we just put .2t at the end of the command. Let's take a look at an example problem that will require us to use one of these commands as we conduct a hypothesis test. Here we have a sample of 21 patients. Those 21 patients, that's our sample size, so let's just label that in, who are using a new drug, and it was used to record the remission time in weeks of leukemia. The sample mean, this is not the whole population, it's just the sample mean, was 17.1 weeks. That's our x bar. The sample standard deviation, so just out of these 21 patients, S is 10 weeks. The old drug that was used in this case in the past has a remission time of 12.5 weeks. That's what we're going to claim our average is, and we're going to see if the new drug is different at the 0.01 alpha level. Let's start by setting up our null hypothesis. We want to test the claim that the mean hasn't changed, that the mean is still 12.5 weeks, as we attempt to prove that it actually has changed. It just says is different. It doesn't say greater than or less than. So we're going to do mu is not equal to 12.5. So if we're going to draw a picture of what's happening here, in the middle, we've got our mean of 12.5. But we are going to reject the null hypothesis if we're either greater than or less than. Either side we end up on. Now the formula for t is very similar to the formula for z. t is equal to our x bar minus the mean divided by, we're going to use the sample standard deviation, divided by the square root of the sample size. So in our case, x bar, our sample mean of these 21 patients, is 17.1 weeks, minus the 12.5, divided by the standard deviation of 10 over the square root of the sample size of 21. When we do that on our calculator, we end up with a t value of 2.11. So this 2.11 is what we're going to use Excel to calculate what p-value corresponds with a t of 2.11. And it's important to notice we're doing a two-tailed test here. Two-tailed test with t equal 2.11. On Excel, we can say equals t.dist.2t for the two tails. Open a parenthesis. x is 2.11 comma, the degrees of freedom are always one less than the sample size. We said there were 21 patients, so the degrees of freedom, one less than that, is 20. And when we hit enter, we find out we get a p-value of 0 0.0477. Our p-value is 0 0.0477. 
That is the probability that our null hypothesis is true. We always compare it to our alpha, our point 0, 0.01 in this case, which is the smallest probability where we'll still believe the null hypothesis is true. Here we see the p-value is actually larger than our alpha. That means we have too much evidence in favor of the null hypothesis. So we are going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. So there's not enough evidence to conclude that the new drug is different than the original drug at the 0.01 level of confidence. Hopefully you found this video helpful as you conduct hypothesis tests for the mean. Decide if you're using the normal distribution or the t distribution based on whether or not we know the population standard deviation.